Krishna, mom. <laughs> Parikrama. 
I went four, five. Very young boys. <laughs> they can dance and uh, play on the band. Eh? Okay. Oh yes, you. Uh, uh, and also Saman Kumar. The four big boys. And if that will be Pushpadanta Prabhu. Pushpadanta Prabhu. Jai. Saman Kumar also. Pushpadanta Prabhu. It is too costly, otherwise I would have told you. <laughs> what name? Ranjeev. 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 Ranjeev also. Yes. But too costly. <laughs> too costly. <laughs> too much pressure. Young boy. Young boy. Do Kirtan. You're too old, Ranjeev. You're too old. <laughs> too old. Oh. What? About 15 miles. Mm. Is that open? No, sir. No diving in the ocean. Mm. Go to the ocean, the ocean. Uh, there you go. About seven miles coming and down, mm. dancing and kirtan and Today, uh, yesterday we discussed about Guru Tattva. So I want that some house, there are so many speakers. Those who are preaching here and there and the want that they should preach. First they should learn Guru Tattva and then any Tattva. Backbone of all Tattva is Guru Tattva. So, Tamo Mahaprabhu first, he will speak something, not more than 10, 10 million, because so many speakers. And I also want to speak something. Ah, better not to see copy. <laughs> I offer my respectful obeisances at the lotus feet of my Siksha Guru and my Diksha Guru, whom I love equally, and I wish to offer my total respects on my heart. Because by their mercy, a lame man can cross a mountain, or a dumb man can speak eloquent, eloquent verses. So Guru Davis asked me to speak on Guru Tattva. So, so many verses have been spoken, so many nice things have been said, and rather than repeat the same shlokas, I tried to dig up some new stuff, some new material. And at any rate, uh, we heard the yesterday over and over again, Guru is Rambena Sevena. Uh, that one should worship Guru with Vishramba Sevena, with uh, Anurag, with real feeling in one's heart. Actually, there's a type of sadaka who is more concerned with chanting <coughs> japa and Diksha mantras and these type of things than Guru Seva. But this is more prominent in Vidhi Bhakti, the lower stage of Mighty Bhakti. But in Raga Bhakti, one learns that actually Guru Seva is more important than even one's mantras and chanting Harina. Uh, Srila Prabhupada explains in the 20th chapter of the Madhya Lila that if one wants to enter into this path of Raga, of love, of devotion, which is real Bhakti, that uh, one should take shelter of a spiritual master, a bona fide spiritual master. And a bona fide spiritual master is one who can completely destroy all one's anarthas. Uh, there are some people here who don't know what anartha is, although you've heard the word many, many times. 
Anartha, I heard Srila Prabhupada explain Anartha as being the, the filth, the dirt that have surrounded our hearts and that are keeping us from experiencing pure Krishna Bhakti, pure bliss. It's these Anarthas that the Diksha Guru, he completely, totally annihilates. Even though one may perform yoga, jnana, all different types of mystical processes, he may be able to temporarily get rid of Anarthas, but there's always a chance for them to come back. Sri Guru Dev has explained that when one takes full shelter, Guru Padashraya takes full shelter of a bona fide Sat Guru, that this Guru can completely annihilate all these Anarthas. And when these Anarthas are gone, then we can climb up to the higher rungs of Bhakti. <coughs> I was thinking, uh, I was reading that actually Guru, Bande Guru, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj begins his Chaitanya Charitamrita with the verse Bande Guru Ishabhaktan. Ishabhaktan. Uh, guru, Bande Guru Ishabhaktan. Ishan Ishabhatarakam. Tat Prakashan Tat Chakti. Krishna Chaitanya Samikam. So here he is mentioned Guru. Prabhupada says this word guru is plural for guru, which means siksha guru and diksha guru, that they are not different. That one cannot say, oh, I love only my diksha guru, and that I have no room in my heart for any more siksha gurus. Uh, my Srila Prabhupada is enough. I've heard this many times. But actually, you see these devotees are drying up very much. And this is because they need siksha guru to nourish their bhakti creeper, the bhakti lata beach, who the diksha guru plants into the heart of the disciple of the sadhaka. Uh, I was thinking of a verse, Lord Shiva, he's identifying who is guru, and in the verse he states, padashara padma palasa, padashara padma vilasa, rochisha, naka dubir no antaragandhidurvata, Pradarshaya Sriyam Apasta Sarvasam Padanguru Margurus Tamojusham. And he gives Krishna's lotus feet all the credit for being Guru because Guru is taking shelter of these lotus feet, Naka Dubir. He's actually absorbing this Dubi. Dubi is effulgence. He can see it, he, he is experiencing it, and therefore. His words are picking up, are going deep to the saffron at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. And therefore, I've heard many, many people imitate Srila Prabhupada's exact words. But because the words are like from the material, uh, or the sound of the material sky, Sri Prabhupada said, you can imitate these words. But only a self realized tattva gya, tattva darshi. A guru who is seeing this supreme absolute truth, his words penetrate deep to the saffron particles on the lotus feet of the Lord, and he carries them in his words. And therefore, his words have the power. That means it. His words are carrying these saffron particles. And therefore, smritin punar, navishmrit patatma bhartmanam. That even though we've become, uh, everyone in this material world is forgetful of their, of their real situation. They're forgetful of our relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, with our loving relationship with God. We've become forgetful. But when one hears sauttama shloka mahan bukha chuto from a, from a mahat, a pure devotee. These words have some transcendental potency, some bhakti shakti. Kali kalera dharma krishna nama sankirtan krishna shakti vinanahi tara pravartan. That if one lets, unless one gets this bhakti shakti, which is a gift from guru and from God, then he, he cannot preach this Krishna consciousness movement. He cannot spread it. It takes that. That's what it takes to get this bhakti shakti. And uh, also, uh, he, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, in his Mukta Charita, he quoted a very nice verse, it's a Nandi Shloka, or an introductory shloka. We've heard Srila Gurudev quote this shloka many times. Nama Shrezitum, Manum Api Sachiputra Matrasvarupam, 
Rupam Tashagrajam Urupurim Maturim Goshtabatim Radha Kundam Giri Varam Moho Radhika Maravasam Prapto Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shvigurum Tamdatosmi We are here praising the qualities of Guru and some people may wonder why do you praise Guru so much? What's so important? There's Krishna. But this, this verse right here explains what is the Guru's gifts? What has he given us? Uh, Nama Shrestam. He's given us Shrestha, the, the greatest name. The name of the Supreme Personality of God. A name that can destroy all obstacles in our lives and bestow Krishna Prema. Uh, Nama Shrestam Manum Api. He's also given us Gayatri Mantra, which can pull us out of this material world. And he's given Nama, which can give us Krishna's lotus feet. Nama Shrestu Manu Bhi Sachi Putram Atra Svarupam. And he's given us the glories. He's told us the secret of Mahaprabhu's incarnation. Of who is Mahaprabhu? How else would we have ever known here in America? Who's ever came and told us about Krishna Chaitanya? About Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is what he's given us. And he's given us Swarup Damodar. His dear Lalita, he's given us Swarup Damodar, who is actually our Siksha Guru in our line. He's the topmost Guru, Guru Rupasaki. He's, he's who we have to take shelter of eventually under the auspices of our Guru Dev and Sri, Mari, Sri Rupa Manjari. So he's given us all this. He's given us Radha Kund and Giri Govardhan. I never really knew the significance of Giri Raj and Govardhan and Radha Kund until just this last Govardhan Parikram. And I saw that I experienced myself the potency of these places. This is what Guru Dev has given us. Sachiputra Matrasma Rupam, Rupam Tasya Agrajam. He's given us Rupa and Sanatan Agrajam, the older brother of Rupa, Sanatan Goswami, who adjusts our position in relation to Rag Bhakti. He's given us all these things. Tashagrajam Urupurim Maturim Goshtabatim. And he's given us the hope of attaining Braj and the Goshtaliisu, the inhabitants of Braj. He's here as a welcoming party. I heard Srila Prabhupada once say, I am a canvasser for my Guru Parampara. I'm, I'm just a canvasser. He's trying to find souls who want to come and serve in the Gana of Lalita under the auspices of Rupa Manjari, under Srila Gurudev. This is what Gurudev is giving us. So, and a whole Radhika Manavasa. He's given us the glories of Sri Sri Radhika and Madhava. A whole Radhika Manavasa. And he's given us Sri Sri Maharaj says in his beautiful translation, which I know Sri Gurudev likes because he's put it in his songbook. And a whole, he has given us assurance of these things. Gurudev can implant Shraddha and if one executes bhakti favorably, and if, by the grace of Guru, by the grace of God, one becomes very fixed and convinced of this knowledge. And when all doubts, sanshayatma vinishati, what, doubts are death in spiritual life. So Guru gives knowledge that destroys all doubts. And when one gets free from doubts, then happiness can come, peace of mind can come. Because without peace of mind, there's no question of happiness or spiritual life. Spiritual life should be ananda. Ananda moya abhyasa. Sri Prabhupada always used to say, Krishna is ananda moya abhyasa. And all of his associates, from top to the bottom, are ananda moya abhyasa. They're of that nature, ananda chin maya rasa. So, actually, Krishna Das Kaviraj in that very first verse, bandi guru nishabhaktan, vishan nishabhatarakan, he's explaining how that Guru, even though he's one, he can manifest as many, as Siksha and Diksha Gurus. Um, you can take your book now. <laughs> no, I, I don't really need that book. I need your mercy to remember everything. Over 30 years, this book is our good remembrance. And you should preach it very well. Our mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you speak with the Lord? I forgot everything. He was hidden. 
not knowing anyone. <laughs> but I know him. Very there are so many hidden jewels. And you should try to preach. My Bharat Prabhu. Come on. Perhaps he is thinking of taking one prastha. Thinking. <laughs> I will ask thinking. me why. Oh. And Just. I will take her, her permission. Oh. Ah, my birth. Hari Bo. The hot seat. Gyanat Chandra Sarada Jana Shala Kaya Chakravarti Thamne Na Thazmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Uh, from our respectful basis, under His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Where are you going? Who is the topmost swan-like devotee and wandering mendicant, and he has kindly come to us, who, whose eyes are closed shut, and he's forcing our eyes open with the torchlight of knowledge. Sriman Bhagavatam, Sriman Bhagavad Gita. So, Guru is not necessarily just a person. Guru is a principle. This principle descends from Sri Nityananda Prabhu, Akanda Guru Tattva. Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita explains the qualifications of Sri Guru. First, his qualification, idam parampara praktam, that he descends from an unbroken line of spiritual masters from Lord Krishna himself, Brahma, Narada Vyas, all the way down to our present Acharyas, Bhakti Manod. Next, he is also a self-realized. Arjuna asks, what are the qualities of a self-realized person? How does he speak? How does he walk? Krishna uh, explains that when one sees equally uh, learned scholars and even dogs, equally, then he is a self-realized soul. What does Guru do for the disciple? First thing he does is he gives the desire, maybe very small, that I am servant of Krishna and that I must serve Krishna. Then he nourishes this desire. This desire uh, increases, intensifies, uh, condenses more and more till one's objections, just like a salesman, he's selling, uh, say, a vacuum cleaner. And the customer will say, oh, I like your vacuum cleaner, but... So the salesman's job is to isolate the objection, overcome the objection, and then close the sale. So Sri Guru is very expert in isolating all objections, instantly all doubts. Well, what about this? What about that? Instantly it is... Uh, reconcile. Sri Guru also reconciles unlimited contradictions in Shakstra, in practicality, in different things we see uh, that seem to be contradictory. He is very expert at reconciling all of these objections. Sometimes one spiritual master will speak uh, of a point and it would be slightly different than the uh, point of another spiritual master. One time Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and the Gaudiya Math, they were speaking in, in 1955 about uh, something that Srila Bhakti Vinod wrote and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati wrote something a little different. So uh, Srila Bhakti Vigaran Keshla spoke and he said that uh, Srila Bhakti Sananda Saraswati was always with his father Bhakti Vinod. He has heard everything. And if he makes some slight adjustment, this is for the benefit of his disciples. So uh, Sri Guru is that personality who continues to enthuse the disciple to make progress in Krishna consciousness. All disciples have objections. Sri Amad Maharaj said one of the uh, uh, problems, one of the, is indecision. Should I 
stay in household life, should I renounce household life? This is very difficult uh, objection. So Sri Guru, he never gives uh, instructions which he knows a disciple cannot follow. So Sri Guru gives the disciple so much power to follow his instructions. Sri Guru also uh, gives uh, his mercy. He wrote me a letter saying that reading and remembering is not enough. Uh, some of our, our many devotees read so much. Myself, I read so much. But these things are not in themselves potent enough to uh, free one from all the arts, the arts necessary to make progress. So Sri Guru, by his merciful glance, by his touch, can do so much surgery. We think surgery is a physical thing, but uh, Sri Guru can do surgery with his eyes, with his voice, with his fingers. So Sri Guru is that personality who uh, nourishes one's desire to serve Krishna. Uh, so many people have said so many things I didn't necessarily prepare. I, uh, without his order, I would not even dare to stand up in this assembly <laughs> and speak. So uh, in Bhagavad Gita, uh, so many things about Sri Guru is stated, but the ultimate is in the last verse of uh, Guru Vastikam, Yashat Prashad and Bhagavat Prashad. Without the mercy of Sri Guru, one cannot get the mercy of Krishna. How can one get the mercy of Sri Guru? One has to serve very intimately Vishwam Seva in the association of high class devotees. Uh, unfortunately, I am the lowest and therefore I am praying to Sri Guru that so many problems that are affecting my heart that can be washed away by his mercy and the power to execute his instructions may come to me. Mandasya Giranjana Savakaya Chaksurun Militan Nenatas, my sweet Sri Krishna Lila Katane Sudakshan Adorya Madhurya Gunaischa Yuktam Param Barinyam Purusham Mahantam Narayanam Tom Sirashani Mahamo Tidan Ninam Bhakti Siromanim Cha Sri Krishna Badabda Hidai Kalidi, Chaitanya Nilamita Sarasalam, Narayanam Tom, Satatam Chapanti. I offer my most humble and respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of my beloved Srila Gurudev, my Diksha Guru, my Shiksha Guru, my everything. The same obeisances to Srila Nitalila Prabhishnam Vishnupad, Shishimad, Gorgo Vindaswami Maharaj who introduced myself and many devotees to Rod Mark and Wiscon, was a very revolutionary preacher. And without his mercy, many of us would not be here today who should have been including myself. As well as Bhakti Vedanta Nitilila Pravishnam Vishnupaj Shishimad Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj and all of our glorious Rupanuga Guru Varga. Dandavat pranams to all the assembled devotees, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, and guests. On this auspicious day, it has given me and many of us an opportunity to meditate on what is the meaning of Sri Guru, what is Guru Tattva, what is the mission of our Gurudev, and what is the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By reading and meditating these last few days and hearing the various speakers, I have decided to speak on a different angle slightly, but one that Gurudev has stressed very much in his book called The True Conception of Guru Tattva. 
On one festival, Mahotsavosh, for Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Gurudev has said that at the end of his life, Srila Prabhupada had lamented somewhat that he had spent his whole life cutting jungles, defeating Mayavads, impersonalists, having to bring gross sensualists up to the platform of bhakti, and also cutting so much apa uh, sampradaya philosophy, sampradaya philosophy. And then what he really wanted to do was to give the topmost Braj Prema, and he did. But he lamented that he couldn't give it as widely as he wanted all over India. Also, our Gurudev has said that Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj also had to cut so many jungles. He had to preach very strongly against uh, sense enjoyment in the West to teach us, the ignorant uh, persons in the Western countries who knew nothing about bhakti, at least that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that we should follow some regular principles in our life. The regular practice of Vaidhi Bhakti in order to elevate ourselves to understand what is Krishna Consciousness. But he also spent so much time cutting these jungles. And Gurudev said one statement in that lecture which really affected me. He said, I will not cut jungles. In my preaching, I will not cut jungles. And we see practically that just as Swami Maharaj, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada had cultivated so much of the field in the Western countries and all over the world. He had planted so many seeds, Bhakti Lada creepers, in the hearts of all the conditioned souls. But there was something left undone and he left that for our Srila Gurudev. He created a very good foundation for which he can build a beautiful palace of Prem Bhakti. So I very much appreciate this, and Gurudev was pointing out that in order to fully uh, render devotional service to Guru, we're talking about Vishram Bena Guru Seva, intimate service with Sri Guru. What does that mean? In order to do that, we have to know about his innermost desires. As Srila Rupa Goswami knew the innermost desires of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhistam Stapitam So the Mano Bhistam of our Gurudev, we also need to know if we're going to render intimate, loving, devotional service. We all want that. We want to be very close to our Gurudev. But it's not such an easy thing because we have to hear very patiently and understand what is he saying, what is his instructions, what are, what are his moods, and what is his mission. And what is his mission? What is his mission? His mission is the same mission as all the mission of all Guru Varga. His mission is the same as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what is the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Anarpita charin charat karunaya bhatir nakalo Samar Paitum Unato Ujvala Rasam Sva Bhakti Sriyam Hari Purata Sundara Dhoti Kadam Vasandi Pitaha Sada Hiraya Khandaras Purati Va Sachinandana May that Supreme Lord Goranga be transcendentally situated in the innermost chambers of our heart. He has descended in this age of Kali by his own causeless mercy to bestow what no other incarnation has ever given before. The priceless treasure, of the most sublime, esoteric, mellow of conjugal love. So Gurudev has further explained this Unato Ujvala Rasam is of two types. The first type is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself came to taste and the second type is what he came to distribute. Prem Ras Dhiryas Karite Ashvadan Raga Marga Bhakti Loke Karite Ashvadan Mahaprabhu came to taste Ashvadan, this Prem Ras Dhiryas, this Anuto Ujvala Ras of Srimati Radhika. And he came to distribute Anuto Ujvala Rasam Sva Bhakti Sriyam. 
The mood of the gopis, especially the manjaris, their love for Radha and Krishna and the maid, uh, being the maidservants of Srimati Radhika, the mood of Radha Dasyam. So this is the innermost desire, the manobishtam of our Guru Varga, as far as I have understood it. To propagate within this world Braj Bhakti and Rag Mark, not simply to create a foundation, but to give the entire uh, pinnacle of devotion. Please don't misunderstand my words. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj did something that no one else could have done or ever may do the way he spread Krishna consciousness. The kind of platform and foundation he created, and he also gave all of this in his books, and he also preached according to capacity of those who could hear. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was also extremely qualified and gave this, but there were some limitations also according to the audience. So now we live in a very auspicious time that our Gurudev is very openly preaching about the pinnacle of devotion. It's a very, very auspicious time for us. If we can grasp this and understand what is the innermost uh, desires of our Gurudev, what is his mission, what is the mission of our Guru Varga, and in that way serve both externally and internally. Seva Siddhika Rupena Siddha Rupena Chatrahi. The purpose of Ragmarg is that externally we engage in Vaidhi Bhakti and internally we're trying to cultivate the moods of the eternal liberated associates of Vrindavan, the Nitya Siddha Parikars, under the guidance of a fully realized Tattagya Rasi Vaishnava like Arshila Day. So I humbly pray to my Gurudev that he will bestow upon me some realization and um, further dedication and devotion that I may realize this uh, supreme goal of life in this life or in the very near future that I may have what he's continually preaching this Prem Bhakti not that we want Krishna our goal is not Krishna our goal is not to get Krishna our goal is to get Krishna Prem especially the Prem of Srila Rupa Goswami and all the Manjaris, and to have love and devotion for Srimati Radhika and the divine couple leaning towards Srimati Radhika. Go bring them. I'm boldly preach. That prefer like me. <laughs> Sundar Gopa, Sundar Gopa. I like Sundar. Yeah. Only thing we step out. I know his family in England. Nice people. Oma Gyana Timiranda Sya Gyana Jana Shalakana. Chakshura Militan Gyana Tasmai Shri Guda Venuma. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Radhikaya Priyatmane Shri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Nalayam Goswami Tunami First of all, I offer my most humble obeisances at the dust of the lotus feet of my spiritual master Shri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Nalayam Goswami Maharaj I also offer my unlimited obeisances at the lotus feet of Shri Srimad Bhaktivedanta, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, by whose mercy I was able to meet my spiritual master. I offer my humble obeisances to our Gaudiya, Guru Varga, and to all assembled guests, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, and guests. We have heard many times that Guru Nishta is the backbone of Bhakti. Why is that? And what does it mean? In Shastra it is stated, Nayamatma pravachanena labhyo 
na me dayana bahuna shutena ya me vaisha vinute te na labias tas yaisha atma vivrinate tanun swam one cannot attain the supreme personality of godhead by thinking about him for a very long time by using one's own intellect by listening by great amounts of listening or great amounts of eloquent speaking that personality cannot be had Shri Krishna will manifest to a person only when Shri Krishna himself decides to do so by his own sweet will and that sweet will is manifested as the grace of Shri Guru It's stated in, in Amnaya Sutra Yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasasaha The thoughts, our thoughts and words return to us being unable to attain the Supreme Lord In other words, when we try by our own will by our own independent efforts to attain Krishna our thoughts and words echo back from the coverings of this material universe unable to pierce those coverings and enter the transcendental realm but Sri Guru kindly comes and provides, offers us a channel directly to the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika and what is that channel? it is Gurave Namaha to give up everything to give everything that we have at the lotus feet of Sri Guru even that which we hold most dear to ourselves we should without hesitation give offer it at the lotus feet of Sri Guru Vishrambena Guru Seva what does it mean? Vishesh Rupena Shraddha intense unflinching uncommon faith that by following the instructions of Sri Guru everything will be attained it also means to serve Sri Guru according to his Manobhishta and the senior devotees have explained what that means very nicely a further meaning is Vigata Sam Brahma Seva to serve Sri Guru in intimacy with Mamata or possess possessiveness without any condition or hesitation the first step to that is to develop what's called Tadi above the mood towards Sri Guru that you are mine and I am yours if a person develops this mood through intense service it cannot be had artificially it can only be it can only be obtained by the mercy of Sri Guru by surrendering everything that we have at his lotus feet and if we look at the great personalities in our line we see that they all epitomize this Vishrambhena Guru Seva the way Srila Narottam Das Thakur served his spiritual master Sri Lokanapru the way our Param Gurudev served Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada the way our Gurudev has served his spiritual master we have also heard over the last few days accounts from Shastra such as the story of Domya, the history of Domya Rishi and Aruni and Domya Rishi and Upamanyu and how they sacrificed everything to please their spiritual master there's one story also which is more recent one time Param Gurudev in 1946 was traveling 
on pilgrimage to Kashi and other holy places. At that time, there was one Brahmachari named Ananga Mohan Brahmachari who became extremely ill with tuberculosis. As I'm sure you know, this is a potentially fatal disease. And when someone contracts it, usually that person, very rarely does that person come out of the condition. This brahmachari was a very simple-hearted Vaishnav who spent all of his energy serving his Guru Maharaj. He sang very beautifully. He cooked for his spiritual master and did everything he could to please him. Param Gurudev's heart melted with affection for that Vaishnav and he personally took him to Calcutta to try to find some cure for his condition. But sadly, Ananda Mohan Brahmachari became more and more ill and he had to be taken to one, one hospital or hospice to another. At that time, one or two other brahmacharis did some help for Ananga Mohan Brahmachari. But it was very difficult and no one wanted to actually be close to him because tuberculosis is highly contagious. When you have this disease, you vomit blood and it's very unsightly and it's highly contagious. So fearing for their own lives, they were very hesitant to help. But our Gurudev immediately, without any hesitation, approached Param Gurudev and asked to please take on this service of helping and caring for Ananga Mohan Brahmachari. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, in his commentary, he states, that if someone is attempting to please Guru without serving the Vaishnavas, it is like pouring ghee, an ablation of ghee onto ashes, completely useless. So Srila Gurudev immediately cared, personally cared for Ananga Mohan Brahmachari without any fear for his own safety or health. And in this way, he received the mercy of the Vaishnavas and of his Guru Maharaj. Just as Param Gurudev also received the mercy of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada by taking his cloth and protecting him when the Sahajas and others tried to stone him. These personalities are very great and it's impossible for any of us to even touch their glories or to say anything. When we try and say anything, we're caught within this material world. I'm very unqualified. And although Gurudev has been very kind and given me many chances, I've been unable to please him. I beg today for his mercy. Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaji Tinamane. Have my respectful obeisances 
unto my Diksha and Siksha Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada, and unto my Siksha Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayana Goswami Maharaj. I have no qualifications, I'm most fallen. But like so many here, we're feeling so much gratitude to our teachers uh, on these days. And <clears throat> I especially am grateful to all of my God brothers and God sisters who are <clears throat> showing me the way. Uh, they are the senior devotees here, the ones who stick to the lotus feet of Srila Gurudev, follow him, serve him, bring others to his lotus feet. Uh, Srila Prabhupada is very, very, very much present here. There's, there is no difference. And just as uh, it is stated by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Shakshad Hari Tena Samasta Shastra Rukta Stata Bhavyata Eva Sadbi Kintu Praburya Priyeva Tasya Vande Varoshi Charanara Vindam that we should uh, understand that Sri Guru is uh, Shakshad Hari inconceivably, simultaneously, one and different from the Lord. Uh, inconceivably, because we can't understand with the mind and the intelligence how this is possible because the mind and the intelligence is material energy. Uh, Krishna says these are my material energies, so how is it possible to understand the spirit with the material? It is only possible when it is revealed. Srila Prabhupada in the early days used to call, call it revelation. Uh, so, this is the process, is a descending process. So, si similarly, as Guru and Krishna are one, why? Because Kintu Prabhuya Priyavatasya, because the Sri Guru is so dear to Krishna, uh, we cannot imagine the uh, transcendental relationship. And therefore, we honor Sri Guru because he is the way to understand who we are, as we were discussing, Srila Gurudev was discussing Sambandha Gyan, Srila Sanatana Goswami. He approached Lord Chaitanya and said, who am I? Why am I suffering the threefold miseries of material existence? And we were all very, very uh, happy to hear, after so much glorification of Srila Gurudev yesterday, his uh, humble, just as Srila Prabhupada on his birthday was so humble and always glorifying his spiritual master and the Guru Bhar. So similarly yesterday and last year also, Srila Gurudev is so humbly saying that uh, I'm uh, giving everything you offer to me to my Gurudev and he is giving to his Gurudev. Uh, so this humility, this happiness that we see in Sri Guru, this uh, perfect knowledge uh, this complete freedom from the mundane energy, this is what is attracting us, and this is what can help actually ourselves and the entire world. So, as I said, Srila Prabhupada is very much present here. There's no difference between the teachings because they are one in purpose. And we should also understand, even from any standpoint, even from the material standpoint, our elders. Uh, Srila Gurudev had knew Srila Prabhupada since 1940s and uh, served him. In fact, I've heard um, from my godbrother Sripad Bhaktivedanta Padmanabha Swami that when Srila Prabhupada in, I think, the 40s came into the assembly where our Parma Gurudev Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshava Maharaj was speaking. Uh, Srila Gurudev said, Guru Maharaj, who is that person? Abhe Charanara uh, And his spiritual master said, mark him well. Listen to him and serve him. He is a very special uh, disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So they have a long-lasting friendship uh, 
And um, also I've heard that when Srila Prabhupada was leaving, he said, I will not be placed into Samadhi by anyone except Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj. And oh, And then he called us, uh, his disciples, I wasn't there, but he called his disciples and so introduced, listened to him. So this is a 28-year-old instruction from Srila Prabhupada to us that better late than never. <laughs> and therefore, I am very, very happy to be here and hear you. Uh, and, um, and I pray for the mercy of all the Vaishnavas and for Srila Prabhupada and Srila Gurudev so that I may advance in Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Das. you? you should come. Oh, what is the duty of a pure disciple to his god brothers Gurudev and Superior? On this subject you speak to me. What is the duty of a pure disciple towards his God brother's superiors and to his guru? Omagyagati Mirandasya Gyana Jana Sarakaya Chakshuram Navatam Gyana Tasmai Shri Vaiva Mukakaroti Vacharam Pangolam Gayate Grim <coughs> In Vaishnava relationships, Don't fear what you do, what you know you should do. How you behave, behave them, you should frankly speak. Tadvidi Puri Pratena Puri Pratena Sambhya More louder, please. Upadekshanti Tegani Tegani Nats that one should approach a bona fide spiritual master and inquire from him submissively and to render devotional service unto the lotus feet of such a spiritual master by serving, hearing, and respecting the different relationships and the different Vaishnavas, that those who are equal, one should be able to uh, offer respect and friendship. And for those who are superior, one should offer... Should he criticize others or not? They should not be room for criticism. Hmm? No, Sri Gurudev. But we should practice mercy and compassion unto those that we feel that is lesser advanced than us. We should be humble or not to others. We should always practice humility in our dealings, Srinata Pisuri Chena, and offer respect and uh, service. Thank you. Try to follow what you have told. In your life, we should not criticize anyone. Always be humble and try to respect superiors, inferior also. 
Krishna, you're Krishna Bhakta. 